moments ago. Bloody hell. The eyes. The, the evil eye. Well, that gives you a sense of scale, doesn't it? I didn't get the chance to say goodbye to the Steel Maiden. But I guess coming here was the right choice, huh? Yep. The party's just getting started. And the fact you can see this from such a distance as Crossbell. What the hell? I so maybe we didn't see the one in Osgiliath Basin from Crossbell. What is that? Dear. A white spire. It seems familiar. Familiar, though, it's like... What? What in the goddess's name? Irina, do you know anything about this? Even I have no idea what's going on now. However, I see. It's not a railway cannon or even an airship. So this is what they... The North Highlands. Whoa. So that's it. <laughs> so this is what the fool mentioned. Their ultimate trump card. It. Just like the thing that destroyed Northambria. But it looks completely different. Ha ha ho! Okay, now I'm happy that they saved these locations. Like, to see them in this circumstance, it's like, oh shit. No way! Old. Damn it! What the hell are they doing? So that's why we weren't going. It's like they were saving them, really, weren't they? I don't think we'll be visiting the places. I think we'll be visiting those salt pails, but... Is that how big it is, or is there another one? Ah! What? What is that thing? It's so huge! Citizens of Heimdall, please remain calm. I mean, I know Heimdall's close to us, Gilliath Basin, but still. Whoa! 
what you see before you is not here to cause you harm. In fact, it is here to open the door to our future. Allow me to introduce our ultimate weapon in the war against Calvert. Behold the key to Erebonia's absolute and lasting victory, the Imperial Fortress! Even through the stone. Imperial Fortress? <laughs> so it's on our side? Great! There's no way we'll lose to Calvert now! No. With that thing, we could take on the entire continent! Long live the Empire of Erebonia! The future belongs to us! At last. The Imperial Fortress, built by us gnomes 1200 years ago. The Tuaha de Danan. That shall be the stage for the final rivalry. Ha <laughs> ha! Excellent. <laughs> the Imperial Fortress! With that on our side, the Republic doesn't stand a chance. So that's what you'll use to swallow everything up. Until nothing remains. Yes, it will herald the end of the world. Supreme Commander of the Imperial Army, General Van Dyke. It is time we wake the World Serpent. On behalf of His Majesty, I now issue the final order to begin Operation Jormungand. We declare war at 1200 hours tomorrow. The Republic's destruction will soon follow. Such a weird mix of, like, Celtic and Nordic mythologies there. Wait, that, wait that's the end of Act 3? I mean, there's a hell of an end of Act 3. <laughs> You've certainly outdone yourself. Oh, yes. Let's get on with it then. System save. Proceed. Half a day passed in the blink of an eye. Five towering spires have appeared throughout Erebonia, as well as a massive floating stronghold. At first the people fell into a panic but announcements from the Imperial government eventually calmed their unrest. And so, though some did so with exhausted resignation, and others with an eerie sort of excitement, all turned to face tomorrow's coming war. Those on the Courageous 2 quickly sent out emergency messages to all their allies. Together, they worked tirelessly attempting to make sense of the situation as much as possible. Now 
As a result, they concluded that the ancient floating fortress had appeared as part of the final stage of the Empire's curse. Its powerful energies would further twist and warp the people's minds in order to drive them to endless war and bloodshed. In addition, the true nature of the numerous white spires was instantly clear to those with ties to the church. They were nearly identical to the salt pale. Are they? The product of a singularity and the cause of the North Ambrian disaster 28 years ago. So maybe with the images we've seen of the salt pale, maybe like this structure that we're seeing now all across Erebonia, maybe that's what was inside it. And because the salt built up, it became this like crystalline spire around it. But shouldn't that happen to this as well? And like the entire empire becomes salt? Like with that many around? It was hypothesized that they were created from residual matter of the original salt pail that had remained underground. Oh. Okay. Changes it a little. However, unlike the original salt pail, these new ones did not convert the surroundings to salt. Thank you! Because otherwise I would have had some serious questions as to what was going on. Rather, they appeared to be spiritually linked to the floating fortress. A multi-layered barrier was also observed surrounding the fortress. With initial analysis revealing it, be completely impenetrable. Operation Jormungand showed no signs of slowing, but the resistance represented by Mille Mirage was also gathering momentum. Calvert, Le Burl, and Remiferia mustered their forces along with support from the Viceland army. The time for the continent's two great powers to clash drew nearer and nearer, with the fate of the world hanging in the balance. Oliver Reen and the rest of the Radiant Wings would not stand idly by and watch fate unfold, however. As they were trying to decide their best course of action, they received an unexpected message from an old friend. It was George. He had called to fill them in on what was happening. The massive object that had appeared over the Osgiliath Basin was an ancient superweapon of the gnomes. The Tuatha did Danan? I think that's how it's said. Otherwise known as the Imperial Fortress. It was an airborne structure from before the Great Collapse that had been hidden away in a space-time distortion caused by the Great One's birth. For the past millennium, the gnomes had been carrying out large-scale renovations on the fortress. It had been converted to connect to the Pales and interface with the curse through them, turning it into the ideal stage for the rivalry of the Seven. It was there they intended to hold the final rivalry once the Great Twilight had reached its climax all for the sake of reforging the Great One. However, though it was faint, a single spark of hope yet remained. The members of the Radiant Wings gathered together, joined by key personnel from Mille Mirage. And together, they began devising an all-or-nothing plan to combat the dire situation before them. And so it was that on the eve of the clash between Jormungard and Mille Mirage, third operation was born. Their course of action decided, all those involved gathered together at a certain location in Crossbell. It's a new day, everyone. The Eve of War. Why here?
So, what are they doing? I swear, if they make Michelin float... Like, we're gonna have our own place, and it's gonna be a theme park! Wait, they can float in the water? I mean, I guess. Like the RC class makes sense. Pantagruel though? I wouldn't have thought that. Nor the um, golden slippers. Oh, I see. Name of the game, everyone. turned out very well. Thanks for your help, everyone. It's not half bad if I do say so myself. Good work. We should be thanking you guys. You're the ones who did the heavy lifting. I still find it pretty hard to believe you were able to make a barrier over all of Michelin. It's something that could only be accomplished through combining the witch's spells, our stigmas, and the Merkaba. Not to mention the raw power of two divine knights. And then we were able to convert the Pantagruel's orbital energy into mana to sustain the barrier. So it is using all of its orbital energy to work on the barrier. So it's like, it's floating just due to buoyancy? Okay. Ha ha ha! Such beautiful teamwork! If we can do something like this, the sky's the limit! Because I was thinking like, well, maybe they're using like their orbital engines and stuff like that to remain afloat in the water just for convenience and all that type of stuff rather than above to remain inside the bubble. But if they're using their orbital power for the bubble, it... it's just buoyancy? It's just buoyancy. We ain't exactly here for a team building exercise, you know. In any event, the barrier should hold. At least for tonight. It'll be able to absorb a few hits from any railway cannon shots that come our way. Ooh. Thinking maybe they have at least a little bit towards their, um, like, anti-grav engines and all that type of stuff that they need to flight. Need to flight. Need to fly. That makes more sense. Not that we'll need to worry much about them, given they'll be busy with the war for the time being. So do you think it makes sense to me? Because like, I can't imagine they designed it for, like, sitting on, like, water or oceans. Like, with buoyancy in mind. There has to be some power going towards just keeping it afloat. I'm sure as far as the Chancellor is concerned, we're simply some minor rabble beneath his notice. He probably sees us as nothing more than the opening act to the Great Twilight. <laughs> opening act nothing? Doesn't he know we're the main event? Oh, hey there, everyone. Good to see you guys. How are your rooms? Did you drop off all your things already? Yeah. Honestly, I was blown away by how ritzy this place is. I can't believe we have it all to ourselves. <laughs> right? Even locals like us don't get many chances to stay here. Hmm. The last time was when Mariabelle invited us after the trade conference. Ah, oh, man. That seems like it was a hundred years ago. Thinking back, it's kind of a bittersweet memory. We still had a lot of fun, though! Looking around, we've got quite the crowd here now. Yeah, and a lot of us are from Thor's, too. We might as well live it up, then. This is our last night before everything goes down, after all. You're right. Tomorrow's when everything will be decided. Our future rests on the success of Operation Shining Steel. Though honestly, it's still a pretty dicey plan. A few hours ago. Yes, yeah, like, tell me the plan. Ugh. <sighs> 
So, this is Operation Shining Steel, then? After reviewing the whole plan like this, it seems more reckless than it does bold. We may not have much margin for error, but I think this could actually work. So basically, we're gonna get a bunch of teams to raid all the salt pails at once, put them out of commission, and then have the courageous two charge into the fortress while its barrier is down. That about sum it up? Yes, but there's little chance that things will go so smoothly. I'm sure we'll have a number of unforeseen circumstances to deal with. Prepare for unforeseen circumstances. Our top priority, however, is making sure the Divine Knights and Class 7 get to the target. That's right. So even if something goes awry and the Courageous 2 is unable to land, we can continue with the plan. As long as Reen and the others can successfully board the fortress in time, we still have a chance. Our foes will try to end the rivalry of the Seven as the Great Twilight reaches its climax. If we manage to seize control of the rivalries before then, however, we may be able to prevent them from achieving their goals. At this point, they think they've already won. It's likely they'll welcome Instructor Reen since they need him to finish the rivalries. And that will be our chance. That's all fine and good, but what about the salt pails? One glance and you could tell they're bad news. They're giving off one hell of an ominous vibe. I feel like they're looking at me. Yes. They seem to be pulsing with energy from the lower planes. And this same energy is what's letting them act as singularities, making them nearly impregnable. Further, given the devils that have been appearing all over lately, I get the feeling we may find even worse things protecting each of the Pales. Yes. It's something we'll need to be prepared for. Well, if we know what we gotta do, then all that's left is to go do it. That's right. It's our turn now. You can leave one of the Salt Pales to the Liberal team. We just gotta decide on which of us is going. The same for us in the SSS. As members of the Radiant Wings, let us help clear a path for you and the others. Estelle, Lloyd, everyone. Aw, you guys. Guess we should have seen this coming, huh? You can count on us, too. Duvali, are you sure? Yes. Since my lord's passing, I've managed to clear my mind a bit. The time has come for the Stallridder to unite once more. To see our lord's will done. Our lord saw fit to grant you her power. It's our duty to carry her torch to light your way. All of you. Don't forget to save some seats for us, huh? We'll be teaming up with those Stallridder gals, if that's okay. I suppose. The boss would have wanted as much from us. Zeno, Leo, sheesh, this is one hell of a lineup. In that case, you can add Sharon and me to the list of volunteers. As maid of the Reintrud family, I would be honored if you would allow me to fulfill this particular role. Uh, Angie! Oh, you too, Sharon? Lady Angelica and I have also suffered at the hands of our foes. After careful discussion, we have decided it would only be appropriate to return the favor. From what I hear, Lieutenant Colonel Mueller will be returning to the Courageous 2 tomorrow. I figured I'd leave the steering up to the expert, so I can get back to kicking some ass. Sharon, Angelica... Then you can count me in too! Can't let you do that, Toa. We need you here. You've got both the Courageous 2 and the entire operation to look after. Angelica's right. I'd very much prefer you to remain at your post. I'll be on the bridge as well. But even then, I suspect we'll have our hands full manning the air defenses. I... understood. There's no need for concern, Toa. We're all in this together. Every one of us has their own part to play. Thank you, both of you. But still, we can't just send them out by themselves. And I guess you'll just have to let me join them. Huh, so that's why you two were acting weird. I'm sure you must think I have no right to come back like this. I can't possibly make up for everything I've done. But I'm going to help anyway, because 
I'd rather not get the same failing marks Franz did. Oof. Oof. That's a burn. Hmm. George. So that makes three. Not as many as I'd like, but... Then allow me to lend you a hand. Grandmother. I fulfilled my duty as a witch, and Leanne has passed. Now that I have played my part, I may as well bloom one final time for you young folk. Were we to add my strength to that of the Ragnar girl, a former gnome, and the Reinford maid, would that be sufficient? <laughs> That'd be more than enough. But if it's possible, I'd prefer to have the curvier version of you come with us. That's better from Angelica? Angie, I don't think now's really the time. <laughs> it would be our pleasure to have you accompany us, Lady Roselia. For crying out loud. We now have four groups. Our forces have expanded considerably. But what about the last pail? You can leave that one to me. P Principal Le Guin! Aren't you supposed to be focusing on all that meal mirage stuff? Certainly. But the plan has always been to leave the first day of the operation in Wallace's hands. I'll be taking over tomorrow, once the war begins in earnest. It's gotta be like a town in like Calvert or something. Lieutenant General Bright anticipates that both sides will spend the first day scouting, with perhaps a few light skirmishes at best. Presumably, General Van Dyke will mobilize the Imperial Army with a similar mindset. All bets are off once that second day hits, however. Odds are, all eight battlefronts will erupt into all-out carnage at about the same time. The Imperial Army will likely be forced to a halt in both Liberal and Remiferia. You can expect they'll deploy their strongest armored divisions, the third and fourth included at that time. Now I'm thinking it would be an interesting ending to this series where it's like, yes, we stopped like the great bad, we stopped the great one reappearing, we've done it. But the resentment would still be there. Like just because you got rid of the curse, remember the curse only magnifies what's going on. It would be interesting if like, yes, we solved that problem, but Erebonius still went to war. It would be like, oh no. And that's how it would end. It'd be like, bloody hell. <sighs> yeah, I thought that might be the case. And the reason you're helping us out is so things don't get to that point, right? Perhaps. It should be a suitable warm-up for the decisive battle to come at least. Though, of course, I won't be going it alone. <laughs> it's as the general says. We too will be assisting you. For the first day, anyway. This will be my final duty as head of the Arsade School. I shall prove us worthy in succeeding the Sandlot name. I don't know if I measure up to these three, but this is as good a chance as any to make up for all the time I lost. Father, Toval. <laughs> I had a feeling Vita would show up to help. Can't pass up a chance to hug the spotlight, huh, Vita? <laughs> Show them what you can do, Zero Artisan. Thank you. We couldn't be more lucky to have the four of you with us. That goes for the rest of you, too. Estelle, Lloyd, Duvali, Angelica, Sharon, each and every one of you. Indeed. And with that, I hereby declare Operation Shining Steel officially underway. We fly tomorrow at noon, as Mil Mirage and the World Serpent begin their clash. We'll be rendezvousing with the rest of our allies in Michelin later today. This may be the last time we're all together, so we're planning to have a small celebration of sorts. We were hoping all of you could join us. The calm before the storm, as we normally do in this series. 